we started this project to do um, a assessment of Kent County, the cultural landscape of Kent County. But we weren't the first ones to do that. It started back when in, I think it was 96, when Maryland started to form the heritage areas in Maryland. There's 13 heritage areas, but they had to do a surveys. They had to do surveys of the areas to see what would be included. And Kent County was in that survey. And there was a lot of work done. I mean, I think it took two years for that to come to fruition. So when we started looking at uh, the cultural landscape, what it meant, what we were talking about, um, we use that as a basis, as a jumping off point. That was very, that was a very important study that was done. And it ended up being the stories of the Chesapeake, which is Kent County, uh, Talbot, Queen Anne's, and Dorchester. So the first thing that we did was we got uh, recognized by Preservation Maryland in an award six to fix. It was called Six to Fix. And they were looking at landscapes that were being destroyed. And it was around the time of when the solar developments were trying to put a large solar development on 500 acres of prime agricultural land. And Preservation Maryland recognized us for that, gave us a award. And we took that money and put it towards doing the assessment. We also got money from other organizations because we needed obviously more money. And we ended up producing the, the cultural landscape assessment. We hired Rob McGinnis, who's an expert in, in cultural landscapes, and he came up and did an assessment and we published a report. That report was finished in, um, I think, 19. And we realized that it was just, a, it was a very dense document. And if you weren't a historian, if you didn't understand cultural landscapes, it, it might, it probably wasn't going to get read by people, uh, the average person. So we set about to do what we call a story map. And we took, we took pieces or portions of the cultural landscape assessment and we made them into stories. We, we blew them up so that um, it could be something that somebody could relate to. And we worked with Washington College and that the cultural landscape assessment is up on Washington. They host it for us. And it's a document that you can, it's a living document. You can go through it. You can click on different stories that we told. Now it doesn't tell the whole story of the cultural landscape, but it definitely take, takes components of that. So once we did that, we had a lot of information. And I one day said, well, I think we should do a documentary because this is so cool. Little did I know, that was a really foolish thing to do. And um, we decided to do it. Um, my board of directors agreed to doing that. And we had, of course, Elizabeth Watson working with us, who's an expert. Um, so we raised the money. We got a Maryland um, Heritage Areas Authority grant through the stories of Chesapeake. And then we had to do matching funds for that. And we went to our incredible community here and we're able to raise the funds that we needed and we hired Maryland Public Television to do the documentary so that's how we got there oh. you know these videos that Maryland Public Television does they're only 30 minutes long so you're not going to get a lot in there we had to decide how to layer it um, we didn't want it to be just these cut segments about because we're looking at it over time we're not just telling old stories which gives you an idea of what the cultural lands, how the cultural landscape was put together or what are the elements of it. But we wanted to layer it over because the, the piece is called the um, Kent County Storied Landscapes, Place, Past and Present. So we wanted to take you from before to now to see if you could not only see what was happening historically, but to see the layers in our landscape as well, which is a really hard concept to kind of put forward. But And we didn't want to just do this chronological thing. So we just had to develop a script. I mean, it took 
it took a long time just to develop the script. It was hours of being on Zoom calls and sitting with the producer and talking about things and talking about it among ourselves and trying to convey the ideas and trying to lay down the groundwork for like what they would do before they could come in and start filming. Well, I think I can explain that best if I talk about what I personally have gotten out of it and I hope that other people can somehow see in it. Um, of course, in 30 minutes, I've gotten more saturation than, than they're gonna get in that 30 minutes, but I'm not from here and I moved to Kent County um, 20 plus some odd years ago. And I had come from big cities. I'd lived in San Francisco, I'd lived in Philadelphia, but I immediately had a connection to Kent County. And I, I, I don't know why. I mean, I just immediately, I felt peaceful and at home and it was, you know, there, I didn't miss not being in a city, you know, I didn't, I loved being in the landscape and I didn't know why. And I think it wasn't until I started to uncover, you know, talk to people that had more expertise about Kent County has a place and it has an identity and it has a culture and it's been evolving over hundreds of years so that we live in that cultural landscape. But if somebody else came back from 200 years ago and walked in, they wouldn't, they would find their place. They would, they would know exactly who they were. So I guess there's something about that identity of Kent County and for other people that have moved here or even live here and aren't quite sure what it, how they connect, I hope that they can find some pieces in there that helps them to understand exactly why they live here, what's important about our landscape, why we want to make sure that we hang on to elements of that landscape to put there for generations to come. Because people that came before us have maintained the culture and the landscape in a way that I get to enjoy it now. And I wouldn't have been able to do it if it were Montgomery County or Howard County. Say or, that, you know, the, docu the documentary is, I don't know, 29.53 seconds long or something, <laughs> whatever, they, whatever they have. But we will have, a, Maryland Public Television will have a website up and we will be layering in other things so that people that see the documentary um, can go to this website. When this, when this documentary shows on the 31st, that website will be up, but it will not be completed. There will be stuff in there so people can go back and visit it and there'll be more put in there. I think